Hello everybody, I am Ardhendu Dey. You are watching my educational channel, Edis English Literature. Today, we are going to read Seven Ages of Man or the Seven Stages of Human Life as it has been told by William Shakespeare in his drama, As You Like It. The very particular speech of Jax is from Act 2, Scene 3. And here he shares some beautiful knowledge of life that it is so important that many of the school's curriculum as well as for general teaching the lesson is for a life-saving content for your existence. So lines 139 to 166 that very act 2 scene 7 constitute this speech. Here the situation is due senior Jax and other who are hosted and living in the forest of Arden. They are making some feast and melancholy Jack quotes this line. All the world's a stage and all the men and women merely players. They have their exits and their entrances. And one man in his time plays many parts. His acts being seven ages. At first, the infant, Mevlin and parking in North's arms and then the winning schoolboy with his satchel and shining morning face creeping like snail unwilling to school and then the lover sighing like furnace with the awful valid made to his mistress eyebrow then a soldier full of strange oaths and birded like a bird jealous in honor sudden sudden and quick in quarrel seeking the bubble reputation even in the cannon's mouth and then the justice in fair round belly with good copum lined with eyes severe and bowed of formal cut full of wise souls and modern instances and so he plays his part the sixth age Sips into the lean and slippered pantaloon with spectacles on nose and pouch on sight. His youthful horse, well shaped and a wall too wide. For his strong strength and his big manly voice turning again towards childish treble pipes and whistles in his sound last scene of all that ends this strange eventful history is second childishness and mayor of Livion sans teeth sans eyes sans taste sans everything The philosophic lines of Jax is of deepest sense. In the twist philosophy, it is nothing such monotonous, but it is all hearty, never harmonizing. A noble vivid aim clearly and definitely is acknowledged here. And the spectator who sees this drama is spellbound 
with the words. In comedy, uh, in kaleidoscopic glimpses, sometimes it flings a slice of life before us and it walks out for righteousness. Shakespeare's As You Like It is much a model piece where such tourism is abandoned. Here are Jax and Tasta. Two are the visionary judges of human desires and destiny. The quoted passage that I have just told and shared with you can be seen in this perception that it is a fact of life, a lesson of life. The seven ages of man is one of the most famous passages in all of the Shakespeare and is spoken by Melancholy Jacks. He is in fact a representative, a representative of that Elizabethan personage who tells life. Among the characters, much of the charm of as you like it is the melancholic Jax, in whom rests a good deal of pessimistic observation upon life. Witticism and rhetoric fly fast and furious in this poetic scene from dramatist William Shakespeare. It is often included in anthologies as a separate poem demonstrating the remarkable power and beauty of Shakespearean words. However, it is cynical and pessimistic in its metaphorical message, making the world a stage, life to a playground or a play and human beings the mere actors in the gloomy drama of life. Each man, it says, goes through life playing different parts, popularly known as the seven parts of life or seven ages of man. What are they? Infancy, schoolboy, lover, soldier, justice, pantaloon, or aged man and ends up old and toothless childhood. All the world's a stage and all the men and women merely players. They have their exits and their entrances. And one man in his time plays many parts. His acts being seven ages. At first, the infant, Mevlin and parking in North's arms. Here in this quoted phrase, Jax compares the world as a stage and with the inhabitants as stage actors. Through the beautiful theoretical metaphor here, Jack represents us as a personage of theater. With the players come on the stage, this stage is of course the art in our infancy and exit as an old man did. The transition of every man from infancy to old man passes through seven stages and the first of these stages is infancy. Infancy, the period from birth to about few years of age is an important time characterized by physical and emotional growth and development. According to Shakespeare, every man in his or her infancy Mewling and puking in the nun's arm, the time of shaky performances with the support of few other actors of this world, be it parents, nurses, or servants. So the first is the infancy that we lead our character ahead. And then the winning schoolboy with his satchel 
and shining morning face creeping like smell unwillingly to school the next we perform a winning school boy the school boy is reluctant to attend the school so early despite of these unwillingly with his school bag the boy snail through the lazy way his shining morning face tells the time of all it on and metaphorically it also tells the time of perspective beginning of the life some might say that his mother takes a lot of care to make him shining in the morning but the boy is yet to start for the day yet to get ready for the day same is the notion of our life we are unwilling to take burden of the beginning of life and then the lover sighing like furnace with awful valet made to his mistress i broke with the passing adolescence he then falls in love the lover's character is full of stormy emotions and fanciful desires tempered by infinite passion of love he tunes himself with the awful ballad made to his mistress cypro this strange feat of passions passions of love makes him a worthy lovable character forever we in our lifetime remember or commemorate the day of being a lover for our lifetime love days are forever shining and bright then a soldier pull up strange oaths and burdened like the bard jealous in honor sudden and quick in quarrel seeking the bubble reputation even in the canon's mouth the composition of the fourth stage of human life often reflects the boastful attitude towards the civilizations and society they represent more importance was attached to ego than to judgment the man is the soldier or the man or the every man of that age is a soldier always run for the reputation despite of knowing them as bubbles or clays his strange oaths his look of facial hair like a pard jealous in honor and suddenly quick in quarrel everywhere and everything there he makes there and those things makes him a unique character but to throw him before the cannon's mouth or imminent danger is never to be appreciated but this thing do happen and these things we do repeatedly at this age and then the justice in fair round belly with good cap lined with eyes severe and barred a formal cut pull up wise saws and modern instances and so he plays his part in fair round belly with good tasty food and with eyes penetrating in barred a formal cut full of wise saws and modern instances man acts his fifth part as a judge his body develops as he gets mature practically his is a blend of custom morality religion and education at this age the visible authority can be well located in him here he acts like the ruler or chief the chief of the family of course the ultimate authority is to pass a judgment on any aspects of life and he like to pass the order for the next prosperity or the next generation in front of him the sixth age shifts into the lean and slippered pantaloon 
with spectacles on nose and pouch on side, his youthful horse well swept a world too wide for his strong sang and his big manly voice turning again towards childish struggle, pipes and whistles in his sound. The sixth stage of human life is its autumnal decadence. The picturesque setting of man is gradually going spectre thin and can no longer fit into his clothes. With spectacles on nose and pouch on side, his voice is turning again towards a childish travel. He is inching towards that state of incapability. Last scene of all that ends this strange eventful history in second childishness and mere oblivion. Sense teeth, sense eyes, sense taste, sense everything. The last stop of human life is his old age, his second childishness. Strange eventful history of man comes to an end. He is so old that his memory does not function properly. He forgets things as like that of a child. Here again he loses teeth. So without teeth, without eyesight, without taste, without everything, he waits for a perpetual rest, for the final retreat of death. Even though pathetic, even though a kind of morose, even though a little bit of philosophically pedantic, the stages of human life is as bad Jack's comments. We all have come to this earth to act accordingly with the whims with the puzzles of our existence called life and which is less controlled by ours rather than physicality of us, spirituality of us, even the ethics of our understanding is all controlled by we the human being and our heavenly design. So we all pass through these seven stages and ultimately come to an end in the name of death. But in all of these years we have the chances to play the seven parts. If there are soldiers, if there are lovers, if there are judges, the child the winning schoolboy and the second childlessness everywhere humanity is in full circle. Try to understand this particular phases as a separate piece of poem and if there is any difficulty in understanding any lines just ask me. This is a beautiful piece of poetic lines you should obviously go through by your own and try to memorize it in your heart. So bye bye, like, share, comment and obviously subscribe to my channel. Thank you.